Hello, everyone. This is Caroline again. It's good to be back here. Hope you had a wonderful weekend as well. And we are back with our online patient meeting and our IVF webinar. And well, today we have another topic, so um, stay tuned. We will definitely discuss it. And with us tonight, you can already see uh, there is Dr. Jose. Hi, how are you? Can you hear me well? Yeah, I can hear you. Hi, good afternoon, Caroline. It's good to have you here, Dr. Jose. And uh, let me just briefly uh, tell you how it's going to work tonight. So we will simply start with an introduction from Dr. Jose, and then we will go for the most common questions. Right after that, it will be time for your questions. You know what to do, but just in case, let me remind everyone that you need to type the, ch uh, the questions in the chat section. And after the introduction, after those most common questions, you will uh, be able to, Dr. Jose will answer your questions one by one. So uh, make sure to, to ask anything you would, would like to, go, to do. And uh, once again, let me remind you that Stronger Together initiative, all those events, we had them already 41 in April, and there are so many much more of those coming uh, in May. And all of those um, events has been brought to you thanks to our ambassadors and partners as well. So huge thanks to them. You can see them right here. It wouldn't be possible if it weren't for all those partners and ambassadors, as you can imagine. Uh, so thank you. And uh, as I've already told you, tonight we have another topic, which is this time vitrification of embryos and oocytes. And our presenter, our guest is Dr. Jose Luis de Pablo, and he is actually a, um, a laborator laboratory director at Fertility Madrid and Art Vitoria. And of course, he will start with a sh very short introduction and presentation. And well, Dr. Jose, um, are you simply ready to go ahead? Okay, Caroline, thank you for your presentation. I want to thank my IBF for inviting me here today and uh, okay good afternoon everybody and uh, thank you for joining us today and uh, well I'm, like I said uh, like uh, Carlin said I'm an I'm embryologist senior embryologist clinical embryologist I've been working in this field for 20 years already so that makes me think that um, I'm older than I than I think but uh, I love my job and uh, and this is a topic, vitrification, that we're going to talk today that uh, I really, I really love. Okay, so uh, here I wanted to just—I mean, I'm not not just talking, but I wanted to show you a few slides so we can talk about it. And um, maybe some of you doesn't know about the, our last—I mean, our our old technique that that we used to freeze the embryo was called slow freezing and um, so I wanted to show you the difference and uh, between this these two methods and um, here okay next one so when we talk about vitrification we would we talk about much higher uh, cryo uh, concentration of cryoprotectants we're talking about much higher cooling rates and that means that we're not going to have uh, ice crystal formation. That's the problem, or that was the problem. I hope nobody uses uh, this, techni this, uh, this technique now. But the problem with the slow freezing was the transformation of a liquid and solid with formation of ice. Formation of, of ice is the, the biggest problem with, with uh, cryopreservation and the thing is that uh, it can damage our embryos, it can lyse uh, our cells, which means that we're not going to have embryos for transfer or we're not going, I mean, uh, we uh, the potential of those embryos can be decreased, okay, because of that um, uh, crystal formation. In this one, uh, we're talking about the time that it takes us to to freeze the embryos. In the first one, it uh, with the slow freezing, it takes us uh, about, or it took us about 120 minutes, which means that um, 
we spend a lot of time uh, freezing the embryos and we are not taking care in in uh, in other things in in our labs and with if we talk about vitrification it takes us only 12 minutes and then the the main and the most important point between these two techniques is the survival rates okay with the slow freezing we get a 60 percent of survival rate and if we talk about vitrification with uh, outside vitrification we're talking about 95 percent and uh, if we talk about embryo vitrification we're talking about almost 100 percent of survival rate i mean what you need to have is a, a very good protocol of vitrification you need to have um a very good um Pro, a vitrification program to get this uh, this or this um, uh, rates and uh, I mean vitrification as I said is my favorite topic in IVF and um, and uh, I always say vitrification is the greatest discovery in the 21 century because you know has allowed us to make the cycles more affordable when I say more affordable, what I'm trying to say is that uh, we're going to have more embryo transfer with, if we have frozen embryos, we're gonna be able to have more embryo transfer. And uh, we couldn't say uh, that with uh, the slow freezing because of the survival rate. So this is the, the like I said, the greatest uh, discovery that we had, okay? Then in this slide, I wanted to show you the devices that we use uh, for vitrification. And um, if you see the, the dark mark uh, at the end of the, of the device, uh, we use that to place the embryos really close to this mark. So as you can imagine, the embryos are, I mean, we work under a microscope, the, 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 the embryos are really small. So if we place them really close to this mark, when, when we warm them, uh, we're going to be able to see, to see them easily. Yeah? So, so that's the way we, we use the, the straws. And then the last, the last picture is, the, is one of the tanks that we use with liquid nitrogen. And um, as that's, this is where we keep them uh, safe and uh, we keep them well organized. You see the different colors that we have with the straws and you see the different color, the colors that we have in, uh, in, in our tanks. And uh, this is the last slide that I wanted to show you. These are two papers that uh, I participated in. And uh, the, the, one of them talks about the deleterious effect of that hormone stimulation in, in our patients. And um, the other one talks about um, two, I mean, two groups, one with fresh embryo transfer and the other one with warm embryo transfer. And what we saw is that we have better results with, uh, with warm embryo transfer, not because of uh, the vitrification itself, it's just because of the other paper that I, that I told you about, is because that um, hormone stimulation can uh, affect the, the uh, the implantation rate on that endometrium because of those those hormones. So this way, what we do, we normally do in, in our clinics is we don't uh, perform fresh embryo transfer. What we do is we vitrify the embryos and we transfer them in, uh, in the next cycle, so maybe two, two cycles after that or three. And, uh, and we have better results because of that, because we believe, and, uh, and the studies say that, that uh, that hormones can affect the endometrium. So what we do is we transfer that free endometrium, free hormone endometrium. Okay, so um, I finish here my presentation. We can start with... Uh, with uh... Perfect. Thank you so much for that introduction, for that presentation. Hope you I can't hear you. Hi, hope ah, you no. can hear me. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you so much for your presentation. Thank you so much for your explanation to, to this topic already. And of course, we will have more um, about this right here. So let's get to those most common questions. And of course, then it will be time for your uh, questions.
Okay. So the very first one is right here. How long can the embryos or sites be stored? Okay, this is a good question. I mean, uh, they can they can last forever. The thing is that um, the the tanks that we that I just show you, uh, they need a maintenance, and uh, we need to check them every day, and we need to see the level of the liquid nitrogen just to keep them safe. And uh, but uh, the thing is that can, they can be stored for a long, long time. Perfect. Thank you so much for this. And let's get to the next question we have. Do the embryos lose any possibility to achieve a pregnancy after warming following them? Uh, well, the thing is, I will say first, uh, what we need is to achieve a good survival rate. That's the first thing that we need to do. That's why I said we need a good protocol. We need um, good vitrification program to achieve uh, results close to 100% of survival rate. After that, we're talking about uh, achieving a pregnancy. So the answer for this question is we don't lose any, possi any possibility because uh, uh, the embryos have... Uh, if they, I mean, if they survive well, uh, they have the same uh, possibilities to implant that a fresh embryo. Okay, and now, uh, like I say, we're talking that when when we have uh, frozen embryos, we have uh, we're going to transfer in an endometrium that doesn't have any effect of the uh, stimulation. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you so much again for answering that question. Next one, when is the best moment for fertility preservation? Okay, the best moment. I mean, now with this question, we're going to talk more about oocytes. Okay, so I would say the best moment for fertility preservation would be um, the best age should be 25. Okay, I would say that. Um, we all know that um, young women, with, being 25, they don't think in, they are not thinking about this kind of treatments or something like that. You know, this is like the last thing that they're going to think about. And uh, so I always say that uh, this should be the present of the grandmas to the granddaughters, you know, to pay for, for a treatment like this, for a fertility preservation treatment. So, so you know, that could be easy for that. And, um, and the thing is that uh, we don't, I mean, we, you need to see every case, but uh, we don't recommend to, to do this when you're, or, or the good, let's say this way, uh, patients under 35, that could be a, a, good, a good age for, for, fertility for fertility preservation. So if you're thinking about doing that, do it before you're 35. Because uh, you don't know how many patients uh, on their 40s, uh, they say, okay, uh, now I don't have any, or I have a really less number of, our, of, uh, of oocytes. My, mm, the quality of, our, of my oocytes is not good. And I didn't know anything about fertility preservation in, in my past, you know, and it's, it's really sad, you know, because they say I didn't know anything about this or, or, or maybe I, I wasn't thinking about this before and I, and I didn't preserve my, my oocytes. So that's really sad because now they're on their 40s and they don't have quality, quality in, in their oocytes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. It's true, you know. Uh, so that's that's something that definitely should be, I would think, educated. Yes, more so that uh, more people, more women, are aware that it's actually possible to do it. So it's definitely an important. Yeah. Of course. Topic. Of course. And we talk and we we talk about it a lot in mm -hmm. uh, in different media. But but you know, still, I mean, we have more patients for fertility preservation, but but still, it's a, a small number of yeah. them. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much again for that. And now, what do you think about cumulative cycles of all sides in poor responders? Okay, um, the thing is, um, this is a really good strategy in our in our daily daily routine. But 
from the economic point of view, or point of view um, from the the thing that we're gonna like we're gonna have more oocytes to get uh, embryos at the end. But um, in our clinics, we don't recommend this uh, when our patients are over their 38, 39. Why? Because, I mean, they're, they're, um, the quality of the embryos can be compromised already. So if we, if we vitrify them, the only thing that we can be doing is uh, decreasing their, their quality, so damaging them. So that's why we don't recommend it. I mean, sometimes uh, they don't have a partner and uh, they are working really hard right now or they're just not thinking about having a baby. And uh, you can, the thing is that you need to tell them this, okay, uh, over 30, over 39, it's not a good technique to do it because maybe we're, instead of, of uh, preserve the, that all sites, maybe we are damaging them. But, but um, I, will, I, will, I mean, I would say that it's a really good strategy. Answering the question is a good, really good strategy, but you have to know uh, the age of the patients and you have to, to, to explain to them the, the problems. If they are over 38, 39, the problems that we can find. Maybe we're, we're thinking that we can, we're, we vitrify three all sites. Then in the next cycles, we, we, we vitrify another three. Okay, we, we already have six, but maybe what we have been doing is that those three, if we have been, if we have uh, used them fresh, maybe we could have some embryo. And, and now because we vitrify them, we're losing the possibility of having some embryo. So we have to, to be uh, honest with this and we have to tell our patients. Okay, thank you so much again for your answer to this uh, very important question as well. And now it's our last question uh, when it comes to those common ones. After that, we will go for your questions. So just go ahead and type them in, in the chat section. And so the last one is in all site donation, what do you prefer? Fresh all sites, freeze all sites, it doesn't or it doesn't matter. Well, when we're talking about all site donation in our in our particular case, we we prefer to use fresh all sites. We have we have our, our own donors, and uh, we have uh, fresh. Uh, we use uh, fresh all sites because we we prefer them. Uh, just in cases that we we have a, a particular phenotype or a different breed, or we need to 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 buy them in a, in a bank, you know, with that uh, specific uh, phenotype. But uh, if we prefer to have our own oocytes, so that way we can perform ICSI with, fre with fresh oocytes. The th um, we prefer, oh, I prefer fresh oocytes because we, you need uh, less oocytes to achieve a pregnancy. You know, when you freeze the oocytes, you always need more oocytes. To, to have the same the same results. So all, all we prefer for sure to use fresh oocytes. All right, excellent. Thank you so much again Thank for you. answering that question. And as I mentioned, now it is time for our uh, questions from you. So let's get to them. We have a few of the questions ready. Okay, are you ready as well, Dr. Jose? Yeah. Perfect. Sure. Okay. So the first question from a patient right here. Hi, what are the chances of success with egg frozen with slow freezing versus vitrification? Um, okay, Susie, um, I think I, I, mean, I answered something um, similar, but the thing is that, um, of course, uh, I'm not sure if today there is somebody that is still um, uses the, the the slow freezing, but uh, for sure the results are much better with vitrification. You know, um, oocyte is um, is more difficult to vitrify than embryos because of the of the size of the cell. You know. We're talking about one cell, one big cells, and the thing is that we need to dehydrate the the cell, and uh, so 
all the water inside needs to go out and uh, what needs to go in is the cryoprotectant. So that's the problem with the slow freezing that we're, we're not able with the slow freezing um, to take all the water out. So like I said, the problem here is the, the ice crystal formation inside the, the oocyte and uh, that can damage the, the oocytes and uh, so the the survival rate would be lower. Okay, thank you so much for your question and your um, answer to this. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Caroline. Um, maybe Susie is also asking, asking about the chances of, of success after you have warmed them. I mean, I, I just said, uh, oh, I just uh, told you about the, the survival rates, okay? The, for sure, the survival rate of, in a slow freezing is gonna be lower than vitrification. But uh, once you have the, 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 the embryos, that, the, I mean, the oocytes that have survived, I'm not sure because I haven't used it, the slow freezing for, for oocytes, but, um, but I'm, the, like I said, the oocyte is really delicate, and uh, even though the the survival has been good, uh, maybe the the development of those embryos that come that come from the the slow freezing oocytes, maybe they're not as good as vitrification. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for that explanation as well. Okay, and there's another question right here. You mentioned that the eggs, amorous, can be frozen indefinitely. Is there any medical evidence that shows this? In the UK, we are trying to get a lot change beyond the current 10 years freezing. My 10 years have expired and I am trying to build medical evidence support a case uh, to use my eggs. Well, uh... Susie, that's a, a good question too. I mean, yeah, I mean, I say that they can last forever because, I mean, vitrification is is not um, an old technique, and and that's true that we we don't have embryos vitrified for for a long, long time. But but I know that they are they are reported cases that with the slow freezing, uh, they have a. a a healthy baby born after uh, a lot of years of of, uh, of that uh, freezing, you know. So I'm sure there is there is uh, papers talking about this about about healthy babies, uh, you know, with embryos um, freezed uh, for a long, long time. Okay, thank you again for this. Now we do have quite a long question and then a follow-up, okay? So okay. Uh, let me just show you this. Okay, unfortunately we have had through, we have gone through 10 IVF failures, eight with my own, two with egg donation, always resulting in miscarriage. With our next donor and this time surrogate also, my husband and I, I would like to use his slow frozen sperm from 2007 and as he was much younger then. My problem now is the clinics in Ukraine won't accept the sperm because they didn't do an infectious disease test within two, three months of that particular sample which Ukraine, Ukraine requires. The closest report is seven months from the time of that sample. As we had done six treatments previously, they did not do this every time. My husband has had many infectious diseases since then, which proves he doesn't have any syphilis, etc. But they still won't accept the sample. Unfortunately, back then it was slow frozen. Is it possible to have this sample tested? And let me go to uh, next one. We have also had his sperm analyzed by Professor Don Evanson, who invented the DNA fragmentation test. And he said only use this sample in comparison to another two samples we have, even though one of the others is vitrified. Yes, lots of details. Yeah. Okay, let me read again slower. Oh, okay. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, um, let's try to do it step by step. And uh, the thing is that uh, Angela, uh, yeah, you have been going through a lot, and um, I don't know. I guess they they try to or they um, perform uh, PGD with your embryos again to analyze their chromosomic chromos their, their chromosomes, and. Uh, I guess they did. I'm not sure because you can uh, maybe you can tell me later. Okay. Uh, but... There is like a follow up right here, two of them. Okay, so the reason we don't want to use a fresh sample is that older man sperm might result in autodwarfism, and uh, there was a type error. I meant my husband has had many infections. Oh, okay, okay, sorry. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know either how old is your husband, Angela, but uh, the thing is that we um, um, we make like new sperm every 72, day, 72 days. So uh, that's not really the problem. As, I mean, like, like in our sites, we're talking that the age is a, a, re a big, big problem uh, because... Um, you you were born with those oocytes and they are as, as old as you are okay 42 and um uh, i mean it's not really true what they say i mean we we use we are both now in our 50s um i mean uh let me let me check the 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 first the first one angela okay um Okay, so the the sperm that you're talking about is when you were 42, and now you're on your on your 50s. Um, I don't. I mean, I wouldn't say that you're gonna have problems like you said of autism, autism, and, and something like that. Because I mean, if you're gonna use that that sperm, uh, but um, I don't know why they don't accept that the sperm because of those infectious disease what kind of infectious disease do your do your husband have this is a this is a really a really long long question and maybe i should um study this lower and, and i could answer you by email but um because i don't understand the infectious disease they they test no, he doesn't have any infectious disease, and yet, yeah, I mean, uh, it doesn't make sense, you know. I mean, they should they should accept that 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 sperm from Australia, and uh, and because I'm sure when they when they freeze that sperm in Australia, they they perform the test that they they needed to, like uh, like uh, hepatitis C, hepatitis B, or or HIV, and uh, so. I, I don't see any problem to to you know to accept that sperm, and um, I don't see a problem to if you want to use the the I don't know about the the fragmentation test, but I don't see any any problem using the the sperm right now. Even even though if he is uh, fifty, I don't see any problem to you for using that. So. You can. I don't know why you want to use that sperm in Australia. It must be done in three, two, three. Yeah, minutes. so it's in Ukraine. The law just requires. Yeah. That's a, yeah, but that's but you know, issue. but the test must be done. I mean, this is a, a sperm that a free, uh, you know, a frozen sperm. So. I, I don't I don't really understand I'm, I'm not sure I mean I cannot tell you about this because I don't know about the Ukraine law, law but uh in, in I mean in our case you can you can of course bring that that sperm or even though you can even use the the new one a new one you know a new sperm sample Mm -hmm. Okay. And of course, if you'd like to get some more details, yes, then as uh, Dr. Jose already told you, it's it's always best to just simply uh, send, uh, drop an email to, to the clinic as well. And Dr. Jose, I will just send you the link, direct link, just in case, if you wish to be connected all you need to do is just ask a question and it will be um it will be forwarded to the team dr jose and his team so i'm sure he they will be able to get back to you and provide you with some more details of course yes because of it course. definitely seems uh, like a very uh, complicated case so definitely 
yeah, needs a bit more details as well. Yeah, right? and and, and okay. of course, because you have been through a lot, you know, and it's not just a problem with your first cycle, you know, we're talking about 10 cycles, you know, with your own oocytes and then two with uh, egg donor. So it's like something to study and, uh, and, and to see, you know, but I mean, I don't know about Ukraine law, of course, but, uh, but it's something to talk about longer, you know, and, and to study a little bit more. Of course. And there's just one more uh, question from, from Angela, if you could take a look. So do you know if this sample can be tested now, like if it's frozen? I guess you, I guess you mean uh, with the DNA fragmentation, for example, or, or you? Yes, let's wait. Like DNA fragmentation, for example? I'm just waiting. I believe someone okay. is typing, so let's give it a second. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. No, that's been done for infectious disease only back then. So. Well, I have to say that I don't really know because we don't we don't test that on our on our experiment. We test this on our patients, but not not in the sperm. The sperm we can test the 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 chromosomes. We can test the DNA fragmentation, but we don't really see if we have any. Um, any infectious disease in that in that sperm so i don't really understand why they why they do that or i don't know like i said i don't know their their ukraine law law but uh we don't do that i mean we just check the patients you know for for those diseases for those um infectious diseases if you want to call it like that but they are but uh but not in the sperm so once you have your sperm uh freeze I mean, the quality of of that sperm is gonna, you know, it's gonna be damaged. So, so you better not do too many things because you're not going to have enough sample for, for for ICSI or for the technique that you're going to use. Okay, thank you so much for that question for sure, and as well as your uh, advice. Okay, thanks so much. And there is another question, a bit of topic, as uh, the patient has wrote, uh, slightly of topic, but do you know of any clinics in the Spain where uh, embryos can be transferred beyond the age of 50? Well, Susie, that's a good question too. Uh, yeah, because, I mean, this is not for law, but we, I mean, this is something that we do in most of the clinics. I say most of the clinics is because not all of them, but uh, I don't know any clinic that, that uh, uh, transfer uh, over the 50, over when you're 50. But uh, the thing is that, I mean, it's, it's different if you're 50 or you're 55 and I mean, maybe you can, you are, you have a baby and you still have embryos, uh, frozen embryos in that clinic and you're 50, 51. I don't know. This is something that, that, uh, um, anybody needs to, everybody needs to, you know, to, to investigate or to think about it. But, um, but I don't, I can't tell you any clinic that, that perform treatments uh, beyond the age of 50. I can't, I, can, I, I don't know. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much again for that. And there's one more follow up from Angela, because you have mentioned about the samples, Does it, it, it depends about samples. Um, so we have 30 samples. 30 samples. And you have to pay for all of them. <laughs> It's incredible. I don't. I, I don't understand why. Why you have thirty? Ah, oh, thirty straps. Okay, that's that's yeah. that. Different. Maybe thirty straps. I don't. I don't know how many. How many sperm samples? Uh, but uh, okay. And um, well, the thing is that with thirty stra with thirty straws, you can you can use it, and they can they can study the the infectious diseases that they they talked about. I mean, because you're gonna have enough enough uh, sperm for for treatments, you know. And I guess with one, maybe two the straws, they should be able to 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 study the the infectious diseases. Okay, thank you so much again for that. Okay, uh, okay, and many more samples at other location as well. So okay, so even more possibilities in such case. Okay. Yeah.
Okay, thank you so much. And uh, now let's go to the next question we have. Here it is. Hello, thank you very much. I am 33 and have a low ovarian reserve of 0 0.6. I have done an IVF with five follicles, all fertilized, but with quality quality C and D. Three days before the puncture, the size was 26, 21, 18, and 17. It could be that the quality was compromised, but waiting too long for puncture. Were they very large? Um, what is the right size to schedule a puncture at three days? Okay, Esther. And, uh, the thing maybe the i would say the the one that was 26 maybe is maybe it's uh it's a little bit big you know the thing is uh we normally do the or we plan the two or three days before the the oocyte retrieval that's when we plan the 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 the, the, the oocyte retrieval and we like to have our follicles in you know, not more than 21, 22, always depending on the on, on the number that, that follicles that you have. And uh, and sometimes you need to lose one, like this one, for example, sometimes you need to lose, to lose that one. Maybe in this case, in this case yeah, they didn't do it because you got, uh, I don't know how many oocytes, you say five follicles. I don't know how many are all fertilized. So I guess you have five follicles and five oocytes. But the 26 one, maybe it's a little bit uh, too much, but 21, 18, 17, they're, they're correct. So uh, the question that the quality was compromised by waiting too long, I don't, I don't think so. Maybe that one could be, but sometimes with, with this size, you can uh, not even uh, retrieve it. You, you just lose it. And... Um, so in this case, I mean, your quality, the thing, the thing here is that you're 33 years old. That's a very good point. And uh, the problem is that your ovaric re reserve is, is low, like I said. And, uh, and the quality is not good because C and D, we don't use the D for transfer. We, only, we could use the, the C ones. And, uh, but I, I don't think the, this was the problem. And uh, with just one cycle, G cannot say that uh, neither, neither my, my quality is bad neither the follicles were too big and that's why i have uh bad quality embryos you know so i don't think i mean yeah like i said maybe the 26 is a little bit uh too big but the others are not are are, are, are in the in a good in a good size okay thank you so much again for your question and uh, your uh, explanation to it, of course, as well. Um, there's another question which you have already mentioned. However, if you could just simply add something, it's regarding the difference in success rate of achieving a birth with vitrified oocytes versus fresh fresh ones. Yeah, yeah. Like I like I said like I said here, we prefer to use uh, fresh oocytes. I mean, we we have a lot of babies in general. In, in the world um, that came from from uh, vitrify oocytes, and uh, and a lot of clinics prefer to to buy the oocytes in, in banks because you have uh, your own donors. It's always you know like uh, too much work, and you have to do uh, a lot of things to to have a, a, a good uh, program, you know, a good donor program. But um, we always prefer that because, like I mentioned, uh, you all, you always need more vitrified oocytes to achieve a pregnancy. And uh, because, because, like I said, uh, the oocyte is a really big cells and it's uh, very difficult to... to um, to make all the water inside to get to uh, to go out, and uh, but um, once you have the once you have the all sites and recover, the 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 success rates are. Uh, are, are about the same with fresh oocytes. Okay, I mean, I mean, the thing is that you need more oocytes. That's the the only difference. Okay, because we use this a lot. 
with with uh, I don't I don't care about uh, the age when we're talking about embryos when we vitrify embryos I don't care I don't really care about the age, but uh, with all sites to vitrify the all sites is uh, it's like I said you I prefer fresh all sites. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much again for this. And uh, now next question is up: Is there a certain kind of food that uh, the May partner right can eat for him to have a good quality sperm? Okay, this is something that uh, a lot of patients ask. So thank you, Andrea. And um, uh, my my answer is no, not really. You know, and um, they always talking about uh, always talking about the DHA and uh, the, about that acid that you can find in in uh, in, in uh, bluefish and. Uh, in some pills that you can you can take, but you don't really uh, you don't really uh, increase the quality of of your sperm. With I mean, you can try it because there is something that is not is not bad for for you, but uh, or for your for your um, partner. But uh, but uh, you can try it. But um, they, I mean, like my answer would be no. Is is you know you don't see too many differences when you when you take those pills or vitamins or DHA or okay thank you again for that question and your answer for that and uh, next one is um is a 37 year old frozen egg better or a 40 year old fresh egg in terms of quality okay um sally Thank you for your question. Um, I would prefer, and uh, I mean, depending also on the on the response that you have. If you are a 40, 40 year old uh, woman and you have a very good uh, response, maybe you can uh, you can get a good quality embryo. But uh, that is uh, always better, you know. To have in this case, I would prefer the 37 year old frozen egg than a, a 40 year old, just because of the of the chromosomal abnormalities that you're going to find when you are uh, over the 39 over 39s, you know. And um, this is this is the, this is the problem. I mean, the problem we're talking about uh, about um, about the age of the oocytes. But it's not. I mean, the, we, when we say the age of the oocyte, is the 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 number of chromosomal abnormalities that you're going to have in the in the embryos resulting. Okay, and uh, and that's the 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 main problem that we have because most of our patients are over 38. So so that's why we from the PGD that technique that analyzes the embryos because we we have a lot of embryos with chromosomal abnormalities and that uh, results in, in 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 no pregnancy or even in if you get a pregnancy and you can you can have a miscarriage more easily. So answering your question I prefer a 37 year old frozen egg better than 40. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Thank you so much once again for that. And uh, okay. Uh, there is another one right here. What is the best time uh, for oocytes freezing after egg collection? Freezing. Okay. Um, well, this is more technical technical question. You know, um, what we do, we perform the oocyte oocyte uh, vitrification two hours after the the oocyte retrieval. What we do is we prepare all the media, we prepare everything in our cabin, and um, and we um, uh, we decumulate the oocytes like one hour and a half. And uh, in, I like that in in two hours they should be already vitrified so that's that's the timing and um and uh something else once you want to use those those oocytes uh what we do is we um we warm them we warm the oocytes and we um we wait uh three hours of, after warming 
to to perform the AC. Okay, so like uh, if you see, it's like two hours and three hours, like five hours, and we do that because uh, that way the oocyte can recover, the the spindle can be recovered, and uh, and uh, the quality of the embryos are is better after that. So two hours after uh, we wait after hours to vitrify after the oocyte retrieval, and then once we want to warm, we wait three hours to perform the ICSI. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much once again for this. And let me go to the next question. It's already you have mentioned you prefer fresh uh, oocytes, um, but if you could add anything, what is the difference in that when it comes to success rates? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, yeah, Maria, I said, I said, uh, I mean, I said it before that I that I prefer fresh oocytes, and um, the thing is that you need more oocytes when you're talking about vitrification. You need uh, more vitrified oocytes you know, that than when you use uh, fresh oocytes. That's, I mean, the success the success rates are are good in both cases. If we're talking about oocyte donors or if we're talking about young patients, okay? Uh, if we're talking about young patient or, or oocyte donors, we, the, the only difference that they, there is, is that we need more oocytes to achieve a pregnancy, okay? That's it. And if we're talking about older patients, of course, I prefer fresh oocytes for sure, no difference. Perfect. Thank you so much once again. And there's another one right here. Just to clarify, if I manage to transfer my eggs over this year to Spain, I would hope to get treatment done ASAP, depending on travel restrictions being uplifted into Spain. I certainly would aim to do before I am 50 in July 2021. But if the first transfer isn't successful and embryos are still there, then can I use them until successful? Um, well, see, I mean, that, that depends on the clinic, like we, we said, and, um, we cannot perform, um, uh, embryo transfer over, over fifties. But like I said, if you perform a transfer and uh, you get, um, you achieve a pregnancy and, uh, and we're talking about the next year, I don't know, that depends. Not not really on the embryologist, but more on the on the gynecologist, because they uh, they they are the ones that see the problems when you get pregnant over the fifties and uh, you know all the the all the the things that we never say. Okay, we say okay, I I I um, I, uh, I was I I mean I got pregnant when I was fifty two, fifty one. Sometimes you 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 hear that. But you don't hear what happens in in a lot of cases when when they get pregnant with that with that age. You know? So we're talking about obstetric, obstetrics problems, and uh, and that you should, I mean, you should be, I mean, or they should be clear with you uh, talking about this, uh, talking about this before you you know you bring your 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 eggs or bring your your embryos to to Spain and see what what they are going to do. You know. Okay, thank you so much once again for this. And uh, the next qu question is right here. How many more oocytes in general do you need to achieve a birth with vitrified oocytes versus fresh? Okay, they're, they're t they are normally they, uh, they say in the literature that uh, you need like seven, eight oocytes to achieve a pregnancy. And uh, and uh, when we're talking about vitrify oocytes, you need like twelve. Perfect. Thank you so depending, much. Depending depending on the age, also. If, me, if we're talking about oocyte, uh, uh, oocyte from a donor, we can say maybe six fresh oocytes and then eight nine vitrify oocytes. Okay. I was talking in general, but now I want to clarify that if we're talking about oocyte donor. Uh, we can say that, okay, six fresh oocytes, seven, I mean, eight um, vitrified oocytes to achieve a pregnancy. Okay, thank you so much once again for that. And there's a follow-up question from the previous patient, okay, so, um, it's true. so would it be better to use a surrogate then and not transfer into your, your late 40s, early 50s? Uh, 
Uh, I mean, if you're, if you, I mean, I guess we're talking about uh, outside, uh, outside from a donor. I guess if you're on your late forties, I think you were talking about that, or your early fifties. Um, well, like I said, uh, if you're on your late forties, I don't see any problem to to. I mean to to have uh, to get pregnant, you know, with that age. It's not the best age to get pregnant, but uh, but we have a lot of patients uh, on that age. So um, to use a surrogate, uh, I don't know, uh, Susie, where you're from, but here in Spain, this is something that we cannot do. The the my eggs, which were frozen when I was 37. Uh, I mean, I will do it yourself. I mean, you're, you say you're you're gonna be 50 um, in 2021, so uh, for sure I will I will use your your oocytes and I will do it I will do it yourself and don't use the uh, surrogate. I don't know in the future. You see, I mean, maybe you you're gonna have one baby and you don't want any more, or you want uh, more and you don't feel like uh, getting pregnant again because you have whatever problems you you can have and uh, you decide to to use uh, those embryos with uh, surrogate so it's this is always better to do it step by step okay don't 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 rush okay and uh and now you can do it yourself and you have all sides when you were uh, when you were 37 so this is a good point and uh i will try to get pregnant yourself and then you'll see in the future what to do Okay, excellent. Thank you so much for that. And there's another question right here. So, oh, but just before that, let me just. Okay. Um, yeah, sorry. There's another one right here. I am 44. Do you think I can use my own X for IVF? Andrea, I would like to tell you, of course, use them. I mean, we have to, we have to. To see what's your your ovarian response, because it's not the same that you can have eight oocytes. It's very different if you can only have one or two. Okay, if you can have a good number of oocytes, um, you can try. It, okay, but the possibilities to get pregnant pregnant are very very low. Of course, in your case. Uh, I would use the PGD to to study the the chromosomal abnormalities in those embryos, and the the thing is that the, uh, we have different results. Okay, we have different possibilities. One of them is that after I analyze those embryos, maybe the last time I checked, I have four. Okay, um, okay, you can try it with your own oocytes. Okay, and. Uh, and sometimes we need we need to to do it before the next step that is oocyte donation okay but um, you have to to know that the possibilities are very low very low like i said okay when you when we have first thing we have to have good quality embryos okay this is the like the the first i mean after the oocyte retrieval we need to to have a good quality embryos after that we need to perform the biopsy for for the for the PGD, okay, for pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, and uh, and see uh, which embryos are normal or which ones are abnormal. The possibilities that we uh, that I've been talking about is that the first possibility is maybe if we we analyze three four embryos, uh, we don't have we all of them are normal, so we cannot uh, have an embryo transfer, okay. This is one possibility, uh, and then, uh, and this is the the more common possibility that you're going to have being 44. Okay, and then uh, once you analyze the embryos, you only only going to be able uh, to transfer. We are going only only be able to transfer those that were normal. Okay, after after the study. So um, uh, I'm not sure if I'm being clear or not. But the thing is, uh, if I want to, uh, if I answer your question is okay. You can try. You need to, or they need to perform PGD on those embryos and see uh, and see what we have, and only transfer the embryos that are normal. Okay, 
but uh, we have, uh, like I say, the possibility first to get good quality embryos is difficult and the possibility to have uh, some normal embryos is very low too. So, but of course you can try it. All right. Thank you for clarifying that and explaining the details for it as well. Um, okay, there's another question. So, still use the frozen egg even if it was frozen by the old slow freezing method? Still use the frozen egg even if it was frozen by the slow freezing method. Er, of course, Susie, I mean, you have them there, so you have you have to try even though if they were frozen with the with the old technique you should you should try and you see what what you have i mean you know you don't lose anything trying to to do it with with those frozen embryos because you i mean you did it thinking about your future and now that you're here you should you should try to use it why not Okay, excellent. Thank you so much for that. And another question is right here. Is there a significant difference in transferring vitrified embers in the clinic where the embers were vitrified versus a transport and transfer of the same embers in another clinic? Can transport and defrosting procedure in another clinic harm the embryos? Where was he? Um, well, that's a good question too. Um, it shouldn't affect I mean, the transport shouldn't affect, you know, the quality of those embryos or the possibility of those embryos to implant. And um, if we're talking about warming, the first thing you say, okay, warming procedure, if we're talking about that, we're talking about different things, okay? Because uh, you have to make sure that in that clinic, uh, they, uh, they use the same protocol or even the same media, you know, because we have a lot of different media from, from different... Uh, brands so you have to make sure of that that they know how to use that uh, procedure that they or the, the brand that they use in, in the first clinic and uh, because that could uh, harm that could damage the embryos for sure okay so the transfer I mean uh, I don't see any problem there because if you have the a good uh, tank for transport and uh, you have uh, liquid nitrogen inside I mean this this should shouldn't be a a problem with that but uh, what what I see a problem is with uh, with a warming procedure okay so make sure that they use the same the same protocol and the same the same media or they or or, or if they tell you that even though they don't use that media, they know how to do it. Okay, excellent. And there's a follow-up question straight away. What do you mean by different media being used? Oh, uh, different brand. You know, not. I mean, we have like in in like different hormones. You know, for 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 stimulation, like different uh, brands in general. Okay, for everything. So uh, every me every media has their own protocol so you can i cannot use uh, my media and then i, I you 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 uh, and you or or they they use every media and you bring your your embryos to my clinic if i don't use that media i i i I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do it correctly you know because of the protocol that is different than the one they use Okay, excellent. Thanks so much again for explaining that. Another question is up right here. How many times is it safe to take IVF injections and not be worried about the risk of ovarian cancer? Well, Sally, this is more a uh, uh, question for, for the gynecologist, but, uh, but uh, I don't see, I mean, as, as I know, there is no risk for, for ovarian cancer. Um, I mean, we're not talking... We normally we use uh, uh, the amount of hormones that we use is not too high, and in the in the past used to be higher, but now it's lower. But even though we don't use uh, um, you know like big amounts of hormones that could uh, put in risk the the ovary the ovary for for cancer, no, you so. I, I would I wouldn't you know I would I wouldn't be worried about about this. Okay, thank you so much again for that. We will be slowly finishing. So if you have any questions left, this is your final call for uh, for those questions. So go ahead and type them in. 
And uh, now let's get to the next question. What is a good number of eggs for a 38 year old? Um, this is a difficult question to answer because sometimes you only need one egg, you know, and with that egg, you have a, a really good quality embryo and you don't need anything, anything else, you know, and, um, and sometimes you need more because uh, depending on the of the quality of the of the eggs, of course, and then the, the resulting embryo. So it's not something that I can really answer, you know, because you, sometimes, like I said, I have um, a lot of patients that only have one or two eggs and they achieve a pregnancy. And sometimes young, even even younger, younger patients uh, with um, 20 uh, oocytes, and they are not they, they didn't get the, the they didn't achieve the pregnancy so i would say in general a good number of eggs it would be 12 you know that's a good number for for in general for all the patients but in 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 that case olga i guess in your case uh i cannot answer that that question the thing is that we need a good quality embryo that's that's not not good number of eggs the, a good quality embryo that can achieve a pregnancy Okay, thank you so much again for that. And next question is up here. How are vitrified amber stored? Is it in straws like sperm? Um, I didn't know if you got to to hear me in my presentation, but I um, but I I show the, the the devices that we use for vitrification, the straws, and uh, no, they're not really like like a sperm. They have like. Um, uh like i said uh, um uh, a plastic uh, on the, at the end that we where we place the embryos and uh and then we we put it right away in a in a liquid nitrogen so they're not the source like like a sperm not because um uh, if we do, i mean we used to do that with with uh with slow uh, uh, slow freezing and uh, the problem is that um, you don't uh, put the embryos uh, right direct with the uh, liquid nitrogen. So uh, this way, the way that we do with uh, vitrification is uh, the results are better because you know you are you are um, putting uh, right in contact with the nitrogen the the embryos. And if you use the straws like in a sperm, uh, they they you know the two, it will take it will take longer for for those embryos to get uh, to get uh, free. So that's okay. that's why we didn't use it. Okay, and if you could tell me which uh, slide that was, just in case. Yeah, the the, the, the fourth one. Yeah, number four. Uh, yeah, right. this one. Okay. So see, this is how. Yeah, this device and this is the the, the plastic. I don't know how to say the, the name for this, but. Uh... Mm -hmm. Okay, we can see this. So, everyone, hope uh, I hope you are understanding this a bit better. Thank you so much again, and uh, it looks like it's our last question for today. So let's get to it. We have vitrified embryos in a clinic in Spain and would like to change the clinic. We are not satisfied with this clinic. We are struggling with transferring the embryos to another clinic. The clinic does not want to collaborate. Are they not obliged to collaborate? Do they have some duties? Who is responsible for organizing the transport? Uh, transport? We were told we cannot order transport being private persons. Only the clinics can do it. We are stuck. Any advice? Yeah, um, yeah, sure. See, I mean, this is uh, this is something that we normally do. But one thing is, uh, it cannot be uh, the embryos cannot be transported with, I mean, with a private, like you say, private person. It has to be something between clinics, and uh, but of course uh, they have to collaborate with this. Of course, the only thing you have to do is okay. Uh, you go to that clinic. Okay, I want to to um uh, to take my embryos and uh, and i want to do my embryo transfer in another clinic so you have to sign uh the the consent for that and uh and then once you have signed that uh we talked 
to each other and we talk in between labs and we see okay um and we say okay you have uh, i'll send you the the tank and uh you know just we talk to each other and see how how we organize the the transport and uh this is something that we we use you know regularly so they should collaborate collaborate for sure they they i mean they it doesn't matter then i mean it doesn't make sense sorry it doesn't make sense that they are they are not uh, collaborating with this okay thank you so much again for uh, that as i mentioned it looks like it's our it was our our last question someone is typing so i just would like to make sure that we have uh, all the questions and you have been able to answer uh, let's give it a minute okay uh, yeah there's a follow-up question okay so um the tank comes from the receiving clinic yeah normally yes. normally we do that I mean, in our case we do that we send our own uh tank okay. and we we send it to the other clinic okay all right thank you so much again for that perfect so it seems that for now at least we don't have any more so thank you so much um dr Jose, for joining our initiative for being with us tonight for your presentation for answering all the questions for so many details and useful details indeed and uh, yes we will be finishing there are some patients that would like to thank you as well so let me show you that <laughs> thank you for the presentation and there are more, uh, lots of those here as well so okay. um thanks so much perhaps something you would like to add okay thank you thank you very much and thank you for being here and joining us and you know, I'm uh, sorry if I didn't answer you as you expected, but uh, but thank you for for your question. They were very interesting. And Definitely. thank you, thank you, Caroline, for helping me with this. It's, it's uh, really nice to have you here with us, and to, well, uh, definitely there are more of those thank yous. Uh, definitely very interesting, and well, I okay, <laughs> thank you for that as well. I just want you to see everything, that's all. Um, all right, so it looks like we will be finishing. However, I would like to remind everyone that uh, we will have another event tonight at uh, 8 p.m. UK time. And again, we will have another topic, sperm donation this time. So stay tuned and I hope to see you all there as well, um, Dr. Jose. Uh, and also, I just wanted to remind everyone that if you would like to get in touch with Dr. Jose and his team, all you need to do is just simply use the link I have sent before and you will be able to ask your questions and i'm sure they will get back to you as well of course yeah for sure perfect and well i would like to just simply add uh, thank you to um for joining us over and over again as you know there will be more events coming uh, throughout whole may so i just really hope you can uh, just uh, simply join us and um, you can follow us on our youtube channel uh, but also all those events are available uh, at I, my ivf answers.com and this event also has been recorded and you will be able to see it very very soon as well on our website thank you so much again have a lovely evening dr jose thank you also very much have a great evening and okay well stay thank safe. you too bye bye